What do we do with those in-between parts of Sunday services, those, those extra bits and pieces? That's what we're talking about today in Teaching Tip 383, Part 10 of the current series, Guidance for Those Hosting Parts of Sunday Worship Services. So what do we do? with the bits and pieces you know the kind of thing where maybe there's uh you, you got the opportunity to create a link between one part of the service and another and if you do have that opportunity then your job is to create a a bridge between the the bit that's going on or just finished and the next part that's coming up something a bit like say after the lord's supper now that we have finished our focus on the lord's supper i'd like to invite steve to come up and lead us in a closing prayer. That's much better than the person who's doing the communion talk just sitting down. Then there's a gap and uh, everybody's looking around what's happening now. Steve's forgotten it's him, or at least that's forgot, he's forgotten that's his cue. And there's an, a meaningless silence. Now, silence can be very valuable. I'll talk more about that uh, later. But not if it's not meant to be there, if it's just happenstance because there's no link, there's no bridge. So you... If you're up there, often we'll have the opportunity to create a bridge between one part of the service and the next. I believe that worship is best experienced as a flow, rather at least than a series of unconnected events. And while we're talking about this, we should also address the issue of the balance between the formal and the informal in our times of worship, because there is a balance. Too much formality and it, it gets it gets to feel a bit stiff. Too much informality and at least to our guests it might appear that we're being frivolous. We don't actually think what we're doing is very serious. This is a balance and it is more an art than a, a science. I, I'm not sure it's the sort of thing you can teach in a classroom setting. It's something you have to learn by experience. How do we get this balance between the formal and the informal Partly it's experience, but partly it's also remembering that we are here with God, with Jesus, and there has to be some sense of formality in the sense that some cosmic presence is here with us. We've got to acknowledge that, and that means honoring and being respectful. But on the other hand, we want a family feel because Jesus came to create a family. So pray about that. And if you're not very good at recognizing those uh, the right balance between the formal and the informal, then observe those who seem to have that and learn from them or perhaps ask them questions about how they manage that. Let's also talk here about gaps. I referred to this earlier, but you see gaps in our services between things can be, can be a problem or can actually help our worship. An unnecessary gap can lead to insecurity in the congregation and our guests as people look around wondering what's going to happen next. Uh, that is distracting and that's not helpful to collective worship. Um, if you are next up to say or do something, then be ready. Be ready to move. Be ready to get up. Be ready to st stand up or perhaps even be moving to the front before the last person has finished what they're doing. But I would also say you should not feel obliged to fill silence. I once had an atheist friend of mine come to a church service years ago. And we had lunch afterwards and I asked him what he thought and I was hoping he'd say complimentary things. Uh, but he asked me one question. What did you think? I said, he said to me, why is your church so afraid of silence? He floored me with that question. In fact, in fact I was silent for quite a while after he asked that question because I I was processing it. He was right. Our service was nonstop, full of action, full of noise. There was no silence. There was no reflection. There was no sense of waiting on God or what he might be about to do. Our enthusiasm in our services, in our tradition, is good. That is a good thing. But our insecurity, as I would interpret it, around meaningful, meditative silence is not a good thing. So think about this in your local situation because every place is a bit different. What's that balance there between energy and frankly noise and there may be some meditative reflective times of silence and if you're doing these in between bits you have to judge whether is this a moment for some meaningful silence or is this a moment to pick up some energy and move on. 
And a lot of this comes down to the whole issue of hosting, which we've talked about a lot in this series. If you're standing there, whether you are doing a bit and a piece or whether you're preaching or whatever you're doing, you are at that point hosting all of us members and guests in the service on that day. So you might like to go back and reread the points I made about hosting in the earlier recordings. Remember, the early church met in homes. Someone was the host of that service, of that gathering in their home. And when you serve publicly by speaking in, in any capacity on a Sunday, you're not, you're not performing, right? Instead, you are representing God as the host of our gathering. You are speaking for God to his guests because that's who we are. And you as God's surrogate host, your role is to represent him well in what you say and how you say it. And that includes even those small bits and pieces, bridge building between sections of the service. So to wrap up for today, if I missed anything here on this topic, do you have a different view? on anything I have written, I would like to know, and I'd like to know your rationale. So please do let me know that all of these things are guidelines. They're not set in stone, and they're not something that's in Scripture exactly. The guidelines are subject to revision at any time, and how we apply them in Watford will be different from how you apply them where you are. But I think the principles here are fair and reasonable, and indeed biblical in many ways. By the way, I'm really grateful for anybody who speaks on a Sunday, whether it's for two minutes or, or 20, the experience of speaking like that can be intimidating for the person who's up there. But the opportunity to share about God and to inspire other people, it's a tremendous privilege. And I want to thank any of you that have the courage and faith to stand up in front of a congregation, whether you feel fully equipped or not. God is with you. Let's just do our best to represent him well, even in these bits and pieces. So remember to always keep calm and carry on teaching. Take care and God bless. Bye.